an Arduino can do many, many things. But you know what it can't do? Act as a PS4 controller. Why? Well, if you've watched my previous custom controller videos, you know how painfully hard it is to get a PS4 to accept custom hardware. But mainly, nobody has ever made the software necessary to achieve this. If you try to find it, you'll come into this library promisingly named PS4 controller. But it turns out that's to make an Arduino communicate with, not emulate, a controller. So you're out of luck. Previously, I had used a computer instead, resorted to another board and software, but by the end of my bicycle video, I decided this was enough. No matter how hard, I swore to myself I would give humanity the ability to make an Arduino into a PS4 controller. So if you happen to watch my bike controller video, which statistically you probably haven't, you'll know I already had a faint idea of how I could do this. Well, that idea was using a library I'd heard about, HID Project, which had a mode called RoboHID, which allegedly allowed you to use custom descriptors and reports and whatnot. For the uninitiated, HID means Human Interface Device, i.e. a device humans interact with, i.e. controllers and stuff. And to communicate with a computer, HIDs use descriptors and reports. Descriptors, as their name suggests, describe the device, and include stuff from the manufacturer to more technical stuff like the address of the endpoints used in communication. As for reports, they are the packets in which the data is actually sent between the host and the device. Both of these come in different types, and they generally look something like this. These are individual bytes. Or like this if you speak binary. I... Wish I couldn't make out any meaning from this, oh man. Anyway, as it turned out, the PS4 developer wiki has data dumps for all the descriptors of the DualShock 4, and that's where the idea came from. So I learned the rough syntax and made a quick sketch where I pasted the descriptors and built the report just enough to send the PS button. You know, because you need to press PS for the controller to be recognized. So I plugged it into my PS4, and nothing happened. Doing some more research, I found out the PS4 was much pickier than that, and required not only the device descriptor and the correct report structure, but also a whole bunch of other descriptors and specific vendor and product IDs, which needed to be sent at the right time. Safe to say, HID project would not be enough. And then I remembered the software I'd used to make my steering wheel, Arduino X input. Because it used a modified AVR core, basically the base firmware of Arduino boards, which is the AVR architecture, to make the Arduino genuinely show up as a controller. On PCs, of course. But at least it came closer. So what I did was fork the original AVR core and look at which files Dave Madison had modified to make his application work. Apparently, he had created a folder with four custom files to set up the custom USB system and define the descriptors, and he had also modified some existing files related to USB. So the first thing I tried was to make the same modifications, but replacing the descriptors he used with the DualShock ones. So I turned my repo into a zip file, created a JSON file pointing to it, added the link to that file in the boards manager, flashed an empty sketch, and immediately my computer recognized it as an unknown device whose drivers were missing. Now that's something I didn't expect. After much digging into, I found that my error had been writing the double bytes in this form, which was the one shown in the wiki, when I had to write them in little Indian form, separated like this. If you think that's painfully specific, you haven't seen anything. And once I corrected that, my device showed up as Arduino Leonardo with error code 10. Turns out, replacing the existing descriptors with mine wasn't enough. I'd need additional types of descriptors not used for X-input controllers. Namely, this 467 byte behemoth that was the report descriptor. I added it to the custom descriptors file and had to implement my own logic to send it to the host whenever I get descriptor request with a W value high byte of hex 22, so a request for the report descriptor was received. And this time, my Arduino was actually recognized as a controller. I made a similar sketch to the one before, to press the PS button by sending reports to the low-level USB functions of the core, plugged it into my PS4, and nothing happened. After further digging into, I found out the TX endpoint advertised by the DualShock's descriptor 
Basically, the number identifying which channel the controller used to send data was 4, while the default for the Arduino, which I hadn't modified, was 1. Once I changed it to 4, I was actually able to see the button being pressed on a web tester. However, it still didn't work on my PS4, and here's where I ran into a red herring, because the timestamp on the tester only updated when the button state updated, while it was continuous for my other controllers. On hindsight though, this was probably normal, and it only seemed continuous on actual controllers because of sensor noise causing constant changes. Whatever the case, I needed more debugging, and I found the incredibly powerful combination of Wireshark plus USB pickup, which helped me to see all the details about every packet of data being sent between my PC and my Arduino. And apparently, my board was responding to the host requests with malformed packets. Looking into these requests, I realized there were still a whole bunch of reports I had to be sending which Arduino X input didn't send. So I decided to look at GP2040C as a reference. After all, they had a working PS4 mode, so in theory I only had to do whatever they were doing. The source code for the PS4 driver was a bit bulky, but after a while I found the part where these reports seemed to be handled. As it turned out, I hadn't set up responses to set report requests or get feature requests. Now, in a real controller, you'd respond to this with stuff like calibration data, the MAC address, etc. But you can also respond with dummy data, which is what GP2040C did. So I copied the byte arrays they sent as response, added them to my descriptors file, and implemented a similar switch block to respond to each feature request report ID with the correct array. However, among these features, there were two which were used for authentication, and you'll know what I mean if you watch my bike video, and they were hex F1 and hex F2. Basically, Sony wants you to use their pricey controllers, so they periodically demand solutions to authentication challenges as part of the feature reports. And to solve these challenges, you need, first, cryptographic keys they only put into official controllers, and second, probably a lot more computing power than the Arduino has. If you don't solve these challenges, your controller will be disconnected after 8 minutes. However, I had a plan, so I simply responded to these two with a stall. And after making sure I was handling everything I needed, I plugged it into my PS4... and nothing happened. Now, I spent days trying to debug this, with a 16 hour screen time evenly divided between Arduino, GitHub and Wireshark, and a daily steps counter I could only achieve by going from my PC to my PS4 to plug in my Leonardo a hundred times with different setups. I even managed to break it to the point of not even enumerating and sending garbage along the way due to small mistakes I was luckily able to spot in the end. So as a last resort, I decided to seek some help by rejoining the GP2040C server, which I had left because it absolutely creeped me out. However, the invite link seemed to be down as it didn't work for any of my accounts, so suspecting some kind of IP range ban like the one Wikipedia implemented for some VPNs, I switched to mobile data and it worked. And I was still in when I switched back to Wi-Fi, so good enough. Anyway, when I asked for some help with my setup, all I got was... But read the source code! Read the source code! Oh yeah, the source code I totally haven't fully read like 7 times throughout the past 3 days. But then the next morning, I went to check if someone had actually decided to help, and the server had disappeared from my Discord. I tried to rejoin through the link, but it didn't work. But then I switched to my other account and it did. Surely I hadn't been banned for asking for help. Well, it turns out, immediately after rejoining, I was accused of ban evasion. I asked why they would even ban me as I hadn't mentioned the forbidden topic, and then the server disappeared from my screen. I still don't know why I was banned, and on hindsight the first thing was probably an IP ban, but I'm kinda glad they did. That community sucks and I don't wanna see it again. Anyway, the fact is, I was again on my own, and I spent another long while with little idea what it was that was wrong oscillating between the descriptors, as the ones from GP2040C were different to the ones from the DualShock, and the reports, as I still wasn't sure if stalling was fine for 0xF1 and 0xF2, but no workaround seemed to work. The thing is, 
debugging this stuff is tricky, especially when it works one way with my computer, which I can monitor, and a whole different way on my PS4, which is a complete black box. However, I then had an idea. I could try to replicate the PS4's behavior on my PC by sending all the extra requests the PS4 made that my computer didn't, and monitor that communication. So I made a Python script that sent all the requests I could find the PS4 made and logged the response. And lo and behold, my Arduino was consistently responding with one byte less than expected. So I went back to my logic and realized my mistake. You see, I responded to the feature requests with the report ID I got, followed by the correct data array. However, I defined the packet size as the size of the data array, forgetting I had one extra byte corresponding to the report ID. So I simply added a plus one to the packet length, and when I plugged it in with my sketch, it actually registered. But this only worked because it just so happened that I had switched to the vendor and product IDs used by gp 24 ce to see if they worked, as they used those of a Razer Panthera instead of a DualShock. Once I had it working, I switched back to the DualShock's VID, PID and HID report descriptor, but it no longer worked. So I would guess the authentication requirements are more strict when you declare yourself as an actual official DualShock. So I went back to the Razer Panthera and my core was officially done. Next came the fun part, actually making a library so you guys could set the correct bytes in the report to the correct values by just saying which buttons you want pressed. So I created a new repo with the structure of a typical library and first created the header file which assigns button keywords to numbers I can use in my functions, introduces the functions that are available to the user and then establishes the report structure and some functions internal to the library. Then I have the C++ file, which starts by warning you if you haven't selected the correct AVR core, sets up functions that basically package what I've been using for testing in a nice clean way, and then defines the functions for the user. And here you're actually about to learn how to use it. So when you go begin, the report is initialized with the default values, the TX and RX callbacks are set, and a report is force sent. Then the PS button is set to pressed, and the report is force sent again, so that your controller automatically registers upon plugging in without you having to set up a PS button. The next function is actually my favorite, the maintain connection function. Remember that 8 minute timeout to prevent you from using unauthorized controllers? Well I absolutely destroyed it by making it so that if you call this function and 8 minutes have passed, the Arduino automatically plugs itself out and back in again through software and presses the PS button to seamlessly register again all in roughly a single second. Meaning that, as long as you call this periodically, say every loop repetition, you can keep playing indefinitely, all without having to mess with any cryptography whatsoever. Next is the dpad function, and I had to separate it from that of the buttons because, as I found out, the dpad buttons work completely differently. Instead of setting any button state to true or false, you give it a direction. So for north or up, you'd set the bytes value to zero. For northeast, so for the up and right buttons pressed simultaneously, you'd set it to 1. For east, you'd set it to 2, and so on. And 8 releases it. Then we have the normal button function, which takes a button keyword and a state, and it simply sets the state of the byte corresponding to the button you chose to the state you chose. And even though you can press or release L2 and R2 through this function, you can also use the set trigger function which allows you to use the trigger bytes to set the pressing strength from 0 to 255. So it takes a trigger, left or right, and the value as parameters. And finally, there is the set joystick function, which takes a joystick, again left or right, I just reuse the same enumeration, an axis, x or y, for left or right and up or down respectively, and a value from 0 to 255, with 128 leaving the stick in the middle. And so here I have four cases for setting the value of each axis of each joystick. So, once I'd finished writing my library, I wanted to publish it on the IDE's library manager, so I had to comply with the guidelines. This meant creating a library properties file with some basic data, setting up some keywords to be highlighted in the IDE, and an optional example, for which I wrote a simple script showing the working of the library's functions. I also wrote a readme explaining how to use it, and linked to my custom AVR core, which of course you also need to install for it to work. And I added a readme there as well, explaining how to install the boards package. 
I then went to the library registry and added my repo right at the top. Although now it's no longer at the top because some people have added new ones, so well. And the Arduino bot automatically checked it and told me it was invalid. Turned out an external library couldn't start with Arduino and I had called mine Arduino PS4 because someone had already taken PS4 controller. Like, I had read that rule, but for some reason didn't think much of it, even though it was literally my case. So anyway, I just changed it to PS4 Arduino, the bot approved it, and the next day, my library was in the library manager. So you can now install the library and put your HID cable Arduinos to good use by making any kind of custom controller, but now, PS4 compatible. I can't wait to see what you guys make. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope it helps someone somewhere avoid a bug. As always, please remember to like and subscribe to help the channel grow, and I'll see you in the next one.